Hello, I greet you. Welcome to another one here on Truth and Love the Church. You know, I've always been saying that, you know, it's okay for us to disagree, but we don't have to fight. So I've been seeing things, you know, flying around social media where Prophet Angel say this. There is nothing called generational cases. Hear me well. It's a lie. <laughs> In the New Testament, there is only generational blessing. The Bible says there is no more cases. Why? Because cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. And Jesus hung upon a tree to remove the case. So where are you getting the generational case from? It's a comparison of gods. Your whole family was worshipping one God. And another worshipping Jehovah. But this one was dedicating your whole family, your womb, everything to that God. So when you give birth to your child, he's already dead. In the womb, they've already been sacrificed. That's why I say to you, you need fire. So when I saw this, you know, uh, a lot of people were actually putting out posts saying that Apostle Suleiman and Prophet Angel are fighting, they are opposing each other. I don't know, I think it's a video of Apostle Suleiman that they saw where he was talking about generational cases and they coined it with uh, Prophet Angel's video saying that, you know, they are fighting. But you all know what they've been saying, you know, Apostle Suleiman says this. They are fighting. That is your expectation. And that thing you are wishing for will never happen. No zero, zero crisis. Zero. Not even, a, not even a misunderstanding. But people are doing content. Some say, oh, Apostle has something on him. What do I have? I don't have anything. No crisis between me and the Ubat Angel. And Prophet Angel also agreed, you know, saying the same thing. Right. In fact, someone said... You, do you see, Joseph Suleiman was talking about you. We had already discussed. There is someone who is saying this, who is saying this. I said, no, 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 you need to correct it. Maybe you tell your church, you do this. And he tells me, no, 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 there's this. So when you see him say something, we have already discussed something. He doesn't need to run everything he says with me, and I don't need to run everything I say with him. But the reality is, I would know when he's against me. And if you're waiting... For Johnson and Suleimani, an angel to be enemies, you die. You die very quick. <laughs> You'll be an old man. So I had to play those videos for context, you know. So I'm from the belief system, you know, that, you know, a Christian is not subject to generational cases. You may be due to ignorance, but, you know, in actual fact, you should actually live above them. You understand? Okay. So we also have Apostle Michael Orobo sharing the same thought and he said this yesterday. And I actually love the fact that he addressed all these other things. You know, a lot of people have been saying that without this individual, he, he couldn't be an apostle without all these things. And he's also addressing all those things. So let's listen to what he says. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll meet you in the next one as always. God bless you. And the first implication of his ascension is that he made ministry become possible. I'm not an apostle because I came from a village somewhere. I'm an apostle because at the ascension, Jesus empowered us. You know, I see many ministers with funny theology. They tell them, the reason you are not succeeding is because of your father's house. <laughs> a prophet told me once, so accurately, oh, God wants to announce you this year, but they, your father's house, they are fighting you. He said, go and bring sand. Let's do some prayer so that they won't stop you. And it negated all my theology. I said, go and bring sand. If I now bring the sand, what are we going to do? Is it not the blood of Jesus we will pray with? Is it not the name of Jesus we will pray with? So we just love rituals. I'm not saying demons don't exist. I'm not saying patterns does not exist. But your victory begins with your revelation and your contention from the premise of your revelation. Why do you think Jesus didn't make apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers when he was on earth? He needed to give us authority to do ministry from a height above principalities and powers. So the authority of our ministry begins from far above principalities and powers. So the Bible said it was when he ascended 
that he gave gifts unto men. He said to some, he gave to be an apostle. So I did not become an apostle because somebody ordained me in a church. The church just confirmed it because they recognized what God gave me. I became an apostle from far above principalities and powers. It was when Jesus resurrected that he made me an apostle. And that's why when I am speaking from my office, no principality can stop it. Because I'm not speaking from earth. I'm speaking from heaven. Your ministry came from the ascended reality. Your ministry came from the heights of the heavens. Your ministry came from far above principalities and powers. Demonic patterns exist, but they exist at a realm lower than your ministry. If you are a prophet, if you are an evangelist, if you are an apostle, if you are a pastor, if you are a teacher, you became that from the ascended reality. So nothing on earth should be able to stop you. Go and check out the apostles of Jesus. The moment they were ordained apostles, from that day, all their warfare ended. Fishermen stood up and entered the city and began to take over. There was no record that they went back to make peace with their ancestors. There was no record that they went back. Listen, at the cross, you ended all your transaction with your ancestors. At the resurrection, you started a new economy with God. At the ascension, you stepped into the realms of power. And it is from that realm that you give expression to ministry. I'm not an apostle from Nigeria. I'm an apostle from the third heavens. I'm not a prophet from Zimbabwe. I'm a prophet from the third heaven. I'm not a teacher from London. I'm a teacher from the third heaven. I can be doing ministry from Nigeria. I'm not from Nigeria. I'm an ambassador from heaven. The powers of heaven back me when I speak. Him that ascended was the same that descended. And when he ascended, he led captivity captive. He dealt with our limitations when he ascended. And from ascension, he said he gave gifts unto men. Don't allow human dogma reduce the potential of your ministry. Some told me you can never become a global voice because you are not the third, fourth, or fifth generation. They said, look at Daniel Kolenda. Look at all of those guys. They are fifth generation ministers. I know the place of priesthood. I know the place of heritage. It exists. But hear me. Whether you have it or not, it doesn't matter. You know who my ancestors are? God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Ghost. You know where my life began from? From the resurrection. You know where my ministry began from? From the third heaven. Nothing of earth, nothing of hell can limit my calling. This is why people take one step forward, four steps backward. And they can't understand where they are going. Because today, they believe in the finished works. Tomorrow, they believe in the story one prophet told them. They believe in the story one apostle told them. And none of these things has their root in scripture. Ministry is the ascended life. Ministry is life beyond principalities and powers. That's why when we come, we proclaim seasons. We change circumstances. And we alter the agenda of Satan. There's nothing he can do about it. Because even if he wanted, he couldn't do anything. Number two, significance of the ascension. He affords him a platform for interceding for us. Hebrews 7.25 When he ascended to the eternal courts of heaven, one thing he was doing and is doing for us is to intercede for us. See, this is why we pray, we fast, we keep all the consecration requirement of ministry. But even in areas where we are deficient, suddenly you'll find out that there is a help that grace affords us. That even ourselves know that this is not a product of our labor. It's because in addition to our prayer, there's another voice of intercession from the heavens. Jesus is our eternal intercessor. So listen, sir. When you are doing everything you are doing for God, let it be in your consciousness that you have a backup. Never think you are alone. If you think you are alone, you'll be alone. When I'm done praying, when I'm done fasting, when I'm done worshipping, when I'm done giving and keeping all the consecration as I step out, I say thank you Jesus, I know you've got my back that is my true confidence, because when he ascended, he didn't go there to fold his hand and say I'm coming again, he's interceding for us, so he's not just mediator, he's also our intercessor, and finally his ascension gives him an opportunity to prepare a place for us John 
14, 2 and 3. He said, I'm going to my father to prepare a place for you. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. So when I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven with an assurance that more than enough is ready for me. Somebody told me a vision recently. He was caught up in a trance and they took him to heaven. And they took him to a place and they were showing him real estate. And he came to a very large fleet of buildings. And the angel walking with him told him, he saw on the real estate, they wrote mercy city. He saw mercy, mercy, mercy everywhere. And the angel told him, these buildings belong to Michael Ropo. <laughs> when he told me, I said, I don't know if there are physical buildings there. But whatever they represent, I receive it. <laughs> whatever they mean. Meanwhile, I'm going to start a real estate business too. Oh God. Because as he is in heaven, so shall he be. In heaven, there may be no physical buildings. That's not my business. But I will model it here. While whatever that represents in the spirit, I receive it. I receive it. And I believed him. Because one of my covenant with God is the covenant of mercy. Somebody was praying and he had a body. He said, what is it that you did to Mike Oropo? That he is enjoying the kind of things he's enjoying. I must have it. And God told him, do you know the covenants backing him up? And the person came and met me. I said, what covenants do you have with God? I said, start with mercy. Some people think they are too qualified. When they talk, they talk about their intelligence. They talk about their intercessory power. They talk about their fasting life. They talk about their study life. The Pharisees did more than you. All of us are supposed to do this. But for those who will last, we begin our journeys from mercy. From mercy. That's why I told you, three basic prayers you should pray in this life is, Lord, have mercy. Lord, help me. Lord, thank you. And if you want to be accurate, you can add, let thy will be done. 